Hey everybody, welcome to the class. It's very nice to see you once again. Today is Thursday, tomorrow is Friday, and the weekend is coming. So that is very, very good. Let's check about the platform first. So this is the class of tonight. This is class 12. And for tonight, we don't have any homework. So that will be it. Let's check the attendance then. Okay, Christian Alexander Arevalo Delgado. Daniel Antonio Luna. Good. Daniel Arquímedes Florentino Garcia. Present. Good. Erika Jasmine Martinez Carpio. Present. Good. Fátima Denise Aguilar Márquez. Herman Alexander Duran Linares. Good. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Present teacher. Good. Iván Petrovich Guzmán Aquino. Present. Good. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Present. Good. Holman Saúl Girón Sánchez. Present. Good. Jose Alberto Baños Hernández. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present. Good. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz Morán. Present. Good. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. Manuel Antonio Escamilla Jurado. Good. Nelson Antonio Rodas Rosales. Present. Good. Oswin Alexis Flores Hernández. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Present. Good. Zulma Janet Ramírez Avalos. Present. Good. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemos. Present. Good. David Alexander Rodriguez Sanchez. Present teacher. Good. Perfect. I uh, guess I got everybody, right? Um, yes, I guess we have everybody. Okay. Very good. So let's continue. Yesterday we were checking about uh the reading, we didn't read, but today we're going to read, of course. And uh, let's see how it goes. Hold on a second. Okay. So this is the reading from the book. It's the last part of the unit number two. So we're going to read, but it's very important. Well, yesterday we checked pronunciation and we checked also at the meaning of the vocabulary. Uh, I want you to try to read, in mind that you are reading a story. So that is the way that we need to read this, as, as if you were reading uh, something for a public or an audience, so they understand. So I'm going to read that again. I'm going to read kind of slow, so you can check the pronunciation again. If you have questions on pronunciation, let me know. And then you are going to, okay? So, here it goes. It says, an agent from a phone tech support is talking about the situation when he started production on a new team. At the time, the branch was in the process of moving the office to a different location, causing office equipment, chairs, desks, and computers to be of bad quality and scarce. I was late that day for work, you know, had the afternoon shift, and traffic was just terrible. On that particular day, I just took a random chair from a cubicle that seemed to be empty. Later, a coworker showed up. He was very aggressive about the fact I had taken his chair, but I was not just about to give up the chair when I was in the middle of a conversation with a customer. I told him to get another chair. He must have really taken offense to it. 
The next time I had my coaching session, the manager of the account came in at the end and said that no, that somebody had expressed the opinion that they thought I was a bully. She's playing the business with the chair. I said I wasn't really nasty about it all. But she uh, said, well, we've had it reported and we got to mention it to you. The interview with employee goes on to describe the impact of the situation following the coaching session. After that, I was extremely paranoid about saying anything to anyone, you know, like something offensive. In the next team meeting, it was said that I was not communicating effectively with the team. I was very sad about the whole situation. I felt that there was no need for my team manager to bring her superior to scold me for something so silly. If she had told me, I would have apologized to my coworker and be done with it. The complainant was then prepared to accept an apology, and so an apology was made. The situation continued with a bad atmosphere in the group until the employee was changed to a different team. Pronunciation questions? Teacher? Yeah. Could you repeat atmosphere, please? Atmosphere. Atmosphere? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, welcome. Any other pronunciation questions? Okay. If there are no questions, let's read. Let's see how it goes. Uh, let's start with uh, David Alexander Rodriguez. Let's see how it goes. Who paragraph, teacher? The first three paragraphs. The three paragraphs. Okay. An agent from a phone tech board is talking about a situation when he started production on a new team. At the time, the branch was in the process of moving the office to a different location, causing office equipment, chairs, equipment. and compu on computers to be of bad quality and scare. I was late that day for work. You know how the afternoon shift and traffic was just terrible on that particular day. I just took a, round, a random share from a cubic that same cubicle to be empty. Later, later a crower showed up. Co-worker. He was very aggressive about the fact I have taken his chair, but I was not just about to give me up the chair when I was in the middle of a conversation with a customer. I told him to get another chair. Uh, he must have really taken office to it. The next time I have my coaching session, the manager of the account came, account came in, in at the end and said that somebody had expressed the opinion that they thought I was a bully. 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 She explained the business with the chair. Okay, very good. Perfect. Thank you. So this is what we're gonna do, I forgot to tell you. Uh, one person is going to read the first three paragraphs and the other person is going to read the next three. Okay, so let's continue with Nelson Rodas. I was late that day for work, you know. Okay. No, 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 so it's going to be here, this part. Okay, thank you. I say 
I wasn't really nasty about about it at all, but she said, well, we've had, had it recorded, and we've got to mention mention it to you. The interview with employee goes on the on to describe the impact of the situation following the coaching session. After that, I was extremely paranoid about saying anything to anyone. You know, like something opens in the next team meeting. It was said that I was not communicating effectively with the team. I was very sad about the whole situation. I felt that there was no need for my team manager to bring her superior to call me for something so silly. If she had told me, I would have apologized to my co-worker and be done with it. The complainant was then prepared to accept an apology, and so an apology was made. This situation continued with a bad atmosphere in the group until the employees was changed to a different team. Okay, very good, perfect, thank you. So uh, it's gonna start the first three paragraphs with uh, Carla Lorena. An agent from a phone tech support is talking about a situation when he started production on a new team. At the time, the branch was in the process of moving the office to a different location causing office equipment, chairs, desks, and computers to be of bad quality and scarce. I was late that day for work, you know, how the afternoon shift and traffic was just terrible. On that particular day, I just took a random chair from a cubicle that seemed to be empty. Later, a co-worker showed up he was very aggressive about the fact I had taken his chair, but I was not just about to give up the chair when I was in the middle of a conversation, a conversation with a customer. I told him to get another chair. He must have really taken off into it. The next time I have, I have my coaching session. The manager of the account came in at the end and said that somebody had expressed the opinion that they told I was a bully. She explained the business with the chain. Very good, perfect, thank you. The uh, next one is uh, for Jamie. Okay. I said I wasn't really nasty about it at all. But she said, well, we have a reporting and we go to the mission it to you. The interview employee goes on to describe the impact of the situation following the coaching session. After that, I was extremely, extremely paranoid about saying anything to anyone, you know, like something offensive. In the next thing meeting, it was said that I was not communicating effectively with the team. I was very sad about the whole situation. I felt that there was no need for my team manager to bring her experience to scold me for something so silly. If she had told me, I would have apologized to my co-working and be done with it. The Complaining was the prepared to accept an apology, and so an apology was made. The situation continued with a bad atmosphere in the group until the employee was changed to a different team. 
Okay, very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, Ivan Petrovich. Excuse me. Uh, microphone off. Uh, no worries. Uh, I am from a phone teaching support uh, talking about a situation when Tech he support. started production. Flexible. He started production is a new thing. At the time, the branch was in the process of moving to office to a different locator, causing office equipment, chairs, decks, and computers to be of bad quality and scarce. I was late that day for work, you know, had to do astronaut shit, and traffic was just terrible of that particular day. I just looked a random chair from a cubicle that seemed to be emptied. Mm. Later, a co-worker showing up, the first person said, showing up. Like a co-worker show, show up, score it. Showed up, yeah. Okay. He was very ag aggressive about the fact I had taken his chairs, but I was not just about to give me the chairs. When I was in the middle of a conversation with a customer, I told him to get another chair. He must have really taken offense to, to it. The next time I had my coaching sessions, the managers of the accounts came at the end and said that somebody had expressed the opinion that they threw. I was a bully. She is planning to visit with the chair. Okay, thank you very much. Let's see if Vanessa and Amy. Okay. I said I wasn't really nasty about it at all, but she said, well, we've had it reported and we've got to mention it to you. The interview with employee goes on to describe the impact of the situation following the coaching session. After that, I was extremely paranoid about saying anything to anyone, you know, like something offensive. In the next team meeting, it was said that I was not communicating effectively with the team. I was very sad about the whole situation. I felt that there was no need for my team manager to bring her superior to scold me for something so silly. If she had told me, I would have apologized to my coworker and be done with it. The complainant was then prepared to accept an apology and so an apology was made. This situation continued with a bad atmosphere in the group until the employee was changed to a different team. Very good, perfect, thank you very much. Uh, let's see, Sulma Janet. An agent from a phone tech support is tech support. tech support is talking about a situation when he start started production on a new team. At the time, the branch was in the process of moving the office to a different location, causing office equipment, chairs, equipment. equipment chairs, desk, and computers to be of bad quality and scared. I was late that day for work. You know, I had the afternoon shift and traffic was just terrible. On that particular day, I just took a random chair from a cubicle that seemed to be empty. Later, a co-worker showed up. He was very aggressive about the fact I had taken his chair, but I was not just about to give up the chair when I was in the middle of a conversation with a customer. 
I told him to get another chair. He was he must have really taken an taken offense offense to it. The next time I have my coaching se session, uh, the manager of the account came in in at the end and say that somebody had expressed the opinion that they thought I was a bully. She explained the business with the chair. Very good, perfect. Uh, Daniel Archimedes. I say I want to really nasty about it all, but she say well we've had it reported as we 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 got to mention it to you we the interview the interview employee goes on to describe the impacts of the situation following the coaching session after that i was extremely paranoid about saying anything to anyone you know like something offensive in the next team meeting it was said that I was not communicating effectively with the team. I was very sad about the whole situation. I felt that there was no need for me team manager to bring her superior to scold me for something so silly. If she said, if she had told me, I would have apologized to make a work for worker and be done with, with it. The complainant was then prepared to accept an apology, and so an apology was made. The situation continued with a bad atmosphere in the group until the employee was changed to a different team. All right, very good, thank you. Let's check now Osvin Alexis. Um. I am from a uh, front touch support tech support support is talk, talking about a situation when he started production and a new team. At the time, the brand was at the process of moving the office to a different location, causing office equipment, chairs, desks, and computers to be of bad quality and scarce. I was late that day for work, you know, had the afternoon shift and traffic was just terrible. On that particular day, I just took a random chair from a cubicle that seemed to be empty. Later, a coworker show up, he was very aggressive about the fact I had taken his chair, but I was not just about to give up. The chair, when I was in the middle of a conversation with a customer, I told him to get another chair. He must have really taken offense to it. The next time I have my coaching session, the manager of the account came in at the end and said that somebody had expressed the opinion that they saw I was bully. She explained the business with the chair. Thank you very much, very nice. Let's see uh, Daniel Antonio Luna. Okay. Uh, I say wasn't really nasty about it all at all. But she say, well, we'll have it reported and we'll be going to the open with you. The interviewing employee goes on the on to describe the impact of the, of the situation following the coaching session. After that, I was extremely paranoid about saying anything to anyone. You know, 
like something offensive. In the next team meeting, it was said that I was not communicating effect effectively with the team. I was very sad about the world situation. I feel that there was no need for my team manager to bring her superior to scold me for something so silly. If she had told me, I would have apologized to my co-worker and be done it and be done with it. The complainant was then prepared to accept an apology and so apology was made. Apology. Apology. The situation continued with a bad atmosphere, atmosphere in the group until the employee was changed to a different team. Very good, Paul. Uh, let's listen to Christian. An agent from a phone tech support is talking about a situation. When he starts production on a new team, at the time, the branch was in the process of moving the office to a different location, causing office equipment, chairs, desks, and computers to be of bad quality and scarce. I was late that day for work. You know, I had the afternoon shift and traffic was just terrible. On that particular day, I just took a random chair from a cubicle that seemed to be empty. Later, a coworker showed up. He was very aggressive about the fact I had taken his chair, but I was just not, but I was not just about to give up the chair when I was in the middle of a conversation with a customer. I told him get another chair. He must have really taken offense to it. The next time I had my coaching se uh, session, the manager of the account came in, that, in at the end and said that somebody had expressed to opinion that they thought I was about a bully. He explained the business with the chain. Okay, very good, perfect, very nice. Let's see Hector Francisco. Okay, teacher. Um, eh, the first three paragraphs? No, the second. Second. The second. Okay. I said I wasn't really nasty about it at all, but she said, well, we had it reported and we got got to mention it to you. The interview interview with interview with uh, employees goes on describe the impact of the situation following the coaching session. After that, I was extremely paranoid about saying anything to anyone. You know, like sometimes offensive in the next team meeting it's what say that I want not communi communicating effectively with the team. I was very sad about the whole situation. I felt that there was no fear, no need for my team manager to bring her su superior to call me for some something so silly. If she had told me, I will have apologized to my coworker and be done with it. The complainant was then prepared to accept an apology, and so an apology was made. This situation continued with a bad atmosphere in the group until the employees was changed to a different team. Very good, thank you very much. Uh, Holman, Saul. Not possible. Let's see then to Erica, just me. Mm. 
من سمانتا عايز في نات باص جوسي البرتو بانيوس نات باص اند اي جيس ايفريبادي از رير رايت ستيل اني بادي ميسين مي تيتشر اوكي بليز جو اهيد An agent from a phone tech support is talking about a situation when he starts production on a new team. At the time, the branch, the branch was in the process of moving the office to a different location, causing office equipment, chairs, desks, and computers to be of bad quality and scarce. I was late the day for work. You know how the afternoon shift and traffic was just terrible. On that particular day, I just took a random chair from a cubicle that seemed to be empty. Later, a co-worker show, showed up. He was very aggressive about the fact I had taken his share, but I was not just about to give up the share when I was in the middle of a conversation with the customers. I told him to get another share. He must have really taken offense to it. The next time I had my coaching session, the manager of the account came in at the end and say that somebody had expressed the opinion that they threw I was a bully. She explained the business with the share. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Very nice, my friends. Yeah, your pronunciation is, is very good, very nice. So let's go to the topic that we had pending. So how to delegate effectively. So we're going to speak a little bit about delegation. I know that you know what is delegation, but we're going to check about some tips when you are a manager and how to delegate effectively to other people. So let's start with the first one. Hector, could you please read the first slide? Of course, teacher. How, how to delegate effectively night tips or types, teacher? Tips. tips. Tips for managers. Delegation is a vital management skill, but for some, it is the hardest to put into practice. There are several reasons why managers may shy away from delegating work. They might. All teacher? Yeah, please. Okay. Think it will take a longer to explain the task that actually complaining the it themselves want to feel indispensable, indispens, indispensable, indispensable, yeah, indispensable to their team by begin 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 to keep over specific knowledge, and you completing certain project to prefer not. To ra raising them, reassign. Feel, resign, resign them, and reassign, reassign. Good, reassign them. Feel guilty about adding more work onto another employee's to do list. Lack confidence on trust in who they need to transfer the project to. Believe that they. They are the only ones who can do the job right. Whatever the reason, it's 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 important to continue honing, honing, the skill and refusing the, to delegate can have negative consequence. Not only will your overload your schedule and prioritize 
the wrong task, but your employees will miss out on bill, 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 bill. valuable, Teacher? valuable learning and grown opportunities. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. What did you understand on this one? Uh, I I think uh, it's necessary uh, know how the worker can do. This is very important because if I know the 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 employees don't can cannot do the work, maybe a uh, transfer stress them, stress them. Uh, and it's very, very dif difficult because if I have a, a big group, uh, I need to identify everyone. But is if I have a, a, a short group, I have a problem because uh, I can I can't uh, I don't have the opportunity for delegate uh, accord according according the the characteristic. Or the how would it be potential, teacher? The potential, the potential, the potential, the potential uh, on the, the the worker. I think, teacher. Very good, perfect. Thank you very much. And uh, yes, I mean delegating is very important when you are manager, right? So it says delegation is a vital management skill. What is vital, anybody? Mm -hmm. A vital is like in Spanish, right? vital. So it's something very important, something that you cannot live with. So in this case, management skill is vital. It's something that you have to. Do. And then it says, but for some, is the hardest put into practice. There are several reasons why managers may shy away from delegating work. What is shy? No, I Talk about the it's impossible relation relationship with another because uh, cannot speak or cannot uh, have the como tomar la iniciativa have the initiative because if shy <laughs> of course yeah yeah that is shy shy is when you don't uh, you cannot relate with other people you don't want to talk you don't you are very separate. And actually, that is the meaning here. May shy away is like separate. They want to keep away from, from delegating this guy. Uh, they might say, think it will take longer to explain tasks than actually completing it themselves. Yeah, that is a reason why some people don't delegate. Uh, I better do it myself, he said. I want to feel indispensable uh, to their team by being the keeper of specific knowledge. Also, this is very common. Some people they don't want to share their knowledge. They want to to be indispensable. Enjoy completing certain projects, so prepare not to be assigned. So, when you really enjoy something that you do, yeah, you don't want to to give the task to other people. Feel guilty. What is guilty? If I eat a lot <laughs> and don't respect my diet, I guilty because I eat more that I I I need. I guilty. I feel uh como culpable. I don't know how to say it. Actually, that is guilty. it. Yeah. And you feel <laughs> bad for something, for do something. Exactly. When you feel bad for because you did something, right? So you did something and you say, oh, "My goodness." Uh, I feel bad about that one. So that is feeling guilty. Very good. Uh, so feel guilty about adding more work onto another employee's to-do list. Yeah, that might happen. So you feel, uh, you say that uh, poor people, they are working too much and you do it yourself. Lack confidence. What is lack? Yes, it's when something is means or a little. Mm -hmm. Very good. So, luck is when 
you need something that you don't have, right? Something is, you're lacking of something. In this case, lack confidence or trust in who they need to transfer the project to. So that happens also. People, they say, no, he cannot do that. I will do it because that person cannot do this. Good. The next one says, believe that they're the only ones who can do the job right. Very common as well. Whatever the reason, it's important to continue honing the skill. What is honing? Okay, honing uh, in this one is like making something perfect. So it's a process for you to work and then make something perfect. As refusing, what is refusing? When you delegate to, to do a, a, a task in this case. Very good. When you say no, I reject, I think. Very good. That is a very good scenario. So reject when you say no, I don't, I don't want, I just cannot do this. So as refusing to delegate can have negative consequences. Not only will you overload. What is overload? It's a like and many tags in the in the in the work. Very good. Overload is when you have too many tasks, so too busy. So uh, and then it says you schedule and prioritize the wrong tasks. But your employees will miss out on valuable le learning and growth opportunities. Do you have any questions here? Teacher, what, what's many? Uh, one, two, three, and the first, first sentence. Feel quilt, guilty. What's many in quilt? Guilty. Excuse me? Guilty. Guilty, uh-huh. Yeah, guilty is when you feel bad about doing something. So um, you do an action and you feel guilty. You are like, oh, I did it. I haven't done. Have to do that, that activity, that action. So that is it. Also, mm -hmm. another, another explanation is when, for example, uh, a criminal gets caught by the police and they go to the judge. So you can be innocent or you can be guilty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Any other questions? Okay. So, but why is it important? Let's see. Vanessa, Naomi, could you please send me reading this one? Delegation refers to the transfer of responsibility for specific stats from one person to another. From a management perspective, delegation of course when a manager assigns a specific task to their employees. By delegating those tasks to team members, managers free up time to focus on higher value activities while also keeping employees engaged with greater autonomy. According to a Gallup study, CEOs who excel in delegating generate 33% 30, higher re revenue. These exec executives uh, now they can accomplish everything alone and position their team to top couple tasks they are confident they'll achieve. In turn, empowering employees, boosting morale, and increasing productivity. In the process, CEOs free up their time to focus on activities that will yield the, high, yield the highest returns and grow the company. Here are nine ways you can start delegating more effectively to cultivate high performing teams. Good. What did you understand on this one? Well, I understand that um, a manager ha has to to have a team because only one person can handle all of the activities from the work. 
So if we, if the person can want to achieve all the goals, the person needs um uh, needs have to to more person to delegate all the theories. So because for this reason, the teams are people all of the old uh, profession. So it, it depends on your profession or your experience. You can get um, the work that you have to do for in order to achieve the goals. So it's important that the, the manager knows what is the experience of the employee and what are the skills that need for each activity that the team has to, to achieve. Have to achieve. Okay, very good, perfect. That was a very good analysis. So, yeah, delegation is important because of many things. So, it says, uh, let's check some things. Specific tasks. Okay, from a management perspective, delegation occurs when a manager assigns the specific tasks to their employees. By delegating those tasks to team members, managers free up time to focus on higher value activities while also keeping employees engaged with a greater autonomy. What is autonomy? When you work for your own. For Very yourself. good. When you are self-sufficient, right? When you can do everything by yourself. Okay, so according to a Gallup study, so Gallup is a company that makes some studies, research, service, and things like that. CEO, what is the meaning of CEO? It's like, um, wrong, like a manager. Chief Executive Officer. Very good. Chief Executive Officer. So that is the boss of the boss of the boss, right? The, the... What is the difference between a manager and CEO? Uh, well, manager is in general. You are a manager if you manage people. CEO is a specific position that is uh, like the one who makes the final decision in everything. It's like um, uh, it's like yeah, it's like I don't know. Uh, in general, in the companies, when you are a CEO, you are like the president or the board of directors, for example. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, so it says who sell in delegating generally thirty percent higher revenue. What is revenue? That it's kind of the profit. <clears throat> Very good. It's kind of the profit that you receive, right? The incoming money. So it says this executive know they can accomplish everything alone. Accomplish. What is to accomplish? When you reach some goal, you complete it. Very good. When you achieve a goal, when you reach a point, right? Very good. Everything alone in position, they're team to tackle tasks. They're confident. They'll achieve. Tackle is like when they are pushing, right? They are like, yeah, impulsing something. Then it says achieve. Uh, in turn, empowering employees, boosting morale. What is boosting? Okay. To boost is an action like when you empower something, when you give volume, when you give power to someone. That will be it. So boosting morale, in this case, increasing the morale, right? And increasing productivity in the process. CEOs free up their time to focus on activities that will yield. What is yield? Okay, GL is like, um, how can I explain that? When you are producing something and you have a, a very good performance, that is GL. Uh, and Spanish is something like rendimiento. 
So the highest returns in grow the company. Uh, and the introduction of the next slide is the last slide. Any questions before we move on? Yield could be like performance. Yield is rendimiento. It's not the same about per with performance. Performance is como ejecución. Mm -hmm. okay. So a performance is the difference is that GL is regarding the production itself and performance is regarding the person or the system. Okay. okay. All right, let's move on. So number one, know what to delegate. You cannot delegate everything. But let's listen to Erica. Could you please help me reading this one? Yes, I can. So I'm sorry, I'm a little bit sick, but I'm not try. Okay. Okay. <laughs> First it says, uh, now what to delegate? Not every task can be delegated. For example, performance reviews or any personal matters should be handled by you. <clears throat> After all, hi. Hiring the right talent and knowing each employee's strengths and weaknesses will ultimately make you better at assist, assisting, assigning, assigning deliverables and transferring responsibility to the appropriate team members. <clears throat> Several other day to day activities don't require your over. Oversight. Oversight. So uh, it's their task. You regularly ta ta tackle. Tackle. <laughs> tackle. <laughs> the speed knowing of many words that I didn't, <laughs> many words that I never see. Okay. Tackle the speed knowing your co-worker. Spite. Yeah. I'm sorry, the speed knowing. Your co-worker is very equipped, equipped to complete it. Equipped to complete it. Uh, will as assigning assigning <laughs> assigning. I'm sorry, assigning the project to other employees help bo bolster their careers. Is there someone who could do the work better, or you think it could be teachable moment? delegate. It will show you trust and evaluate your team while also giving your time to focus on more strategic projects. Good. What did you understand on that one? It's pretty interesting because today I choose a quality on my team actually because uh, maybe at the beginning he was not uh, the best se seller actually. But now he really know what does he um, can really learn on increase actually at work. Actually, he can do many things right now, and he is um, he's receiving coaching or training every day about different uh, things to do actually on uh, on the platform, and he is teaching others how to do it. So I think I select a perfect person to do that because I I see, uh, I saw on a he that he really likes teach. So he uh, take me out some stress from the work and he take me out some very heavy, um, how to say it, very, very heavy uh, um, um, like Tareas, different tasks, different tasks, tasks to do on my work. He's a really good co-worker and saving many times a day in the work, actually. <clears throat> okay, very good. Interesting. <clears throat> all right. So, yes, uh, yeah, you cannot delegate all the things. Right? So, you need to know what you can delegate. And let's check, says not every task can be delegated. For example, performance reviews or any personal matters should be handled by you. Definitely, right? Performance review is something that you have to do as the manager. And you cannot 
delegate that to other people. And then it says, after all hiring the right talent and knowing each employee's strengths and weaknesses will uh, ultimately make you better at assigning deliverables and transferring responsibility. Assigning deliverables is together. And that is like uh, tasks that you are going to deliver, uh, um, you are going to delegate, so other people deliver the performance of that one. Okay. Uh, it says to the appropriate team members. And then it says several other day to day activities. What is day to day? It's an experience that you, you make every every day. Every day, right? Day after day. So it's going to be day-to-day -day activities. Don't require your oversight. What is oversight? Like supervise? Something like that. So oversight is supervision about any other thing. So... Is there a task you regularly tackle despite knowing your coworker is better equipped to complete it? Well, that is a very nice question. Despite, what is despite? Okay, despite is like even though, exactly the same, okay, even though. So knowing your co-worker is very equipped to complete, uh, will assign the project to other employees help bolster their careers. What is bolster? It's to increase. To increase, very good. To increase, to reinforce, very good, their careers. Is there someone who could do better, the work better, or do you think this could be a teachable moment? Delegate. It will show you trust and value your team while also giving you time to focus on more strategic projects. Very good, the, the first one. So we're going to check nine of them, and all of those are important. Do you have any questions on this? Teachable. I'm what sorry? Is teachable. What is the word teachable? Teachable is something that you can teach. So that is something that is teachable. Good. Any other question? What What does that mean of tackle? Uh, tackle is like pushing, like impulsing something. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's go to number two. Play to your employees' strengths and goals. Um, let's see who's going to do this. Osvin um, Alexis. Play to your employees' strengths and goals. Every employee should have goals they are working toward and within those goals are opportunities to delegate. For example, maybe you have a direct report who wants to gain management experience, is there an interns? Intern. Interns, they could start supervise, supervising. Supervising. Okay, supervising or a word definitely Define. Define they can own the ex execution execution of the type of war of delegate full factor in their professional development plan. For other tasks, there likely someone on your team with the specific skill set needed to achieve the decided result. Liberate that and play to your employees strange when someone has a higher chance of excelling, they're more motivated and engaged. 
which then benefits the entire business. Good. What did you understand on the number two? Um, that um, put a, a strange guard at, at the team is important for um, uh, it's so important uh, for for uh, uh, for lo lograr the goals to achieve goals. Uh, yes, to achieve the goals. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes. Uh, this is very important because when you are going to delegate, uh, you are going to think about the strengths uh, that your employees or your co-workers have and also the goals that you want to achieve depending on the strengths and the goals. Then you are going to say uh, the person that is better for this uh, activity, for this task is this one, right? So that is something uh, something that we need to consider. Let's check. It says every employee should have goals they're working toward. What is toward? Do you remember? I guess we checked that already, but we can check that again. Toward. The direction. Very good. Toward is a preposition, and it's about direction, movement, towards a goal, right? So you are going into a goal. And within those goals are opportunities to delegate. For example, maybe you have a direct report who wants to gain management experience. Is there an intern they could start supervising or a well-defined project that can own the execution of? Well-defined, what is well-defined? Okay, well defined means that it's a project that you have the specific uh, specifications very accurate. Uh, so everything is exactly on what you want to do. So the definition on every task, every process is very well done. Okay. And then it says the type of work you delegate will factor into their professional development plan. For other tasks, there's likely, remember the pronunciation on that one is tasks. So you say the first S, the K, and the second S, tasks. There's likely someone on your team with a specific skill set and needed to achieve the desired result. Leverage, what is leverage? Okay, leverage is like to uh, to impulse something, to motivate, to to push, to to push up. In this case, a uh, person, right? So, so it's leverage that and play to your employees' strengths. When someone has a higher chance of excelling, they're more motivated and engaged, which then benefits the entire business. Do you have any questions here? No questions. Nice. Let's go to number three. I'm sorry? Can you repeat the pronunciation of ex ex execution? Uh, execution? Execution. I don't know. Execution of. Execution. Execution. Very good. Execution. execution. Nice, nice. So let's move to number three. Uh, Jose Alberto, can you please help me with this? Okay, teacher. Define the desired outcome. Simple dumping work onto someone else late isn't delegating. The projects you hand off should come with proper context and a clear tie into the organization's goals. You've got 
to to have a real clarity of objective, says Harvard Business School professor Kevin Shear in the online management essentials course that includes having alignment on what that could look like and by what timeline and the technique of measuring accomplishment. Before, before anyone starts working on, on a project, they should know what they need to complete and by when, including the metrics you'll use to measure the success of the work. Good, what did you understand here? Um, what do I mean dump, dumping? Uh, yeah, dumping is like putting out something, like throwing away, like, uh, it mean that I just send something to this person or this other person, so something like that. Oh, okay. Oh, um, I guess in a, a when we are uh, delegating uh, the projects, uh, the projects that we put in the in the hands of the other people is or must to be clear uh, for 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 the people must to be clear what is the, what is the goal. What is the goal of the of the of the company? What is the goal of the organization? And we are we need to 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 be uh, really clear for 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 the goals. And is is for uh, we we don't we don't have uh, or we don't uh, give. To the people, uh, opportunity for for uh, confusion or a bad information, and and that is the point because uh, we need to be really clear in the in the goals of the of the of the company. Very good. So that is it. So when you are going to delegate any task or any project to a person, uh, you need to define what you want. So I want you to do this and I want to achieve this and this and this. And it's going to be helpful because of this and this. So that is very, very important, definitely. And well, let's check. Simply dumping. I checked what it was dumping. Work onto. Onto is a preposition very similar to into. The difference of onto and into is that into is when you go into a place, for example, into the house, into the building. And onto is a surface that is a plain surface, so it's into a, onto a paper, or for example, when you go onto uh, the soccer field, because it's, it's not like a building, it's just playing that. So uh, someone else plate, in plate is like the dish where you eat, right? So that would be, isn't delegated. Uh, so this is very important, the first, the first, uh, the first line is very, Simply dumping work onto someone's plate. I mean, simply putting things, simply sending things to do is not delegating. I mean, you need to, to have a very clear objective of what you want to achieve. The projects you hand off should come with proper context and a clear tie into the organization's goal. What is tie? A tie is to put something together, to, to put two things together. Uh, it's very similar, like when you say, I'm going to tie my shoes. So you go and tie your shoes so you don't lose your shoes, right? something like that. Uh, it says you got to have a real clarity of objective, says Harvard Business School Professor Kevin Shearer in the online management essential schools. That includes having alignment on what does good look like and by what timeline and the technique of measuring accomplishment. Before anyone starts working on a project, they should know what they need to complete and by when. This is also very important. So what they need to do and when 
So when you uh, delegate, you say, by the end of the month, by the end of the quarter, by this specific date, you need to finish this, okay? Including the metrics you'll use to measure the success of their work. So matrix like KPIs, right? You're going to use to measure how good the, the prey was done to compare with something else. Do you have any questions on this? Okay, let's go to number four. Provide the right resources and level of authority. Let's see, Sulma. Not possible. Let's see then, Daniel Archimedes. Mm, he's with Sulma. Let's see then. Carla Lorena. Provide the right resource and level of authority. If the person you are delegating work to need a specific training, resource, or, or authority to complete the assigned project, it's your role as a manager to provide all three. Sitting someone or for an impossible task will frustrate but side. Your colleague won't be able to achieve the desired of a phone. Desire. And then you decide outcome. And then you will likely need to put that word back on your to-do list. This is also where you need to find the words to micromanage, telling you to work step by step how you would accomplish the task, and then controlling each part of the process on able, enable then to learn or gain new skills. Focus is instant on what the decided and goal is. Desire. Why the task is decided and goal is. Why the task is important and help address any gaps between the outcome on the current skill set. Very good. What did you understand on this one? Uh, I understand that uh, uh, if you are delegating words, uh, if, if the person needs a specific train, uh, if you how to 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 do to how to uh, supervising the process the the people the people is doing uh, if we have to uh, explain in in uh, a step by step uh, a, accomplish is accompanyar uh, no accomplish is to achieve But you can, uh, if you want to say mm. something like that is, is to campaign, campaigning or companion. Uh -huh. Campaigning the task uh, that the person is doing. 
Okay, very good. So, uh, yes, I mean, you know that you have to know what to delegate and who is going to be the one because of the strengths. Uh, you are going to put the goals and you need to know what to achieve, but also you need to provide the right resources, meaning, as you say, the training, the materials, uh, the equipment, uh, they are everything that they need so they can achieve that goal. So it says if the person you're delegating work to need, to need specific training, resources, or authority to complete the assigned project is your role as a manager to provide all three. Setting someone up for an impossible task will frustrate both sides. Your colleague won't be able to achieve the desired outcome. Uh, do you remember what is outcome? The outcome is like the result of a process. That would be the outcome. And then you likely need to put that work back on your to-do list. This is also where you need to fight the urge of micromanage. What is micromanage? Anybody? Okay, micromanage. Uh, yeah, something like that. So when you uh, get in charge of managing little tasks, little things, okay? Telling your coworkers step by step how you will accomplish the task and then controlling each part of the process won't enable them to learn or gain new skills. Focus instead of the desired end goal and what the task is important and help address any gaps. What is a gap? Okay, a gap is like a space between two things. In this case, the gap is between uh, the outcome and their current skill set. So if they have some skills, but they are not good enough, you as a manager, you need to, to provide those resources so that person becomes the person that you are. Good, do you have any questions? Uh, and this one? Can you repeat what is gap? Gap is like a space, like uh, something that is missing. Uh, almost always is between two things. Okay, for example, uh, the gap when you are learning to drive a car uh, from the very beginning until the very end. So you want to learn to drive a car, but you don't know how to do that. That is like a gap that you have. So it's like a space, like something that is missing. Good. Any other question here? When it says help others, could mean that like get direction. Uh, is that on the second one? No, in the, in the last one, and help others any gaps. Oh, okay, when you say uh, address something, uh, in case of not a di direction, but in this case, it's like a, a situation. When you address something, it's like, for example, when there is a problem and you actually take actions into that problem. So that is to address. So in this case, when you say it help address any gaps, it means that when you... Dele uh, you delegate a, a project to a person, sometimes that person, they don't have the, the knowledge or the skills. So that is a gap. The gap is that they don't have the knowledge or the skills. And when you address that one, it means that you are going to provide the training, the materials, or any other thing. So you take action into that gap. Any other questions? Okay, let's uh, check the next one. Number five, establish a clear communication channel. 
uh, we're going to listen to, let's see, Fatima. Establish a clear communication channel. While you want to avoid micromanaging, 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 you do want to establish a communication channel so that the person you are delegating to feels comfortable asking questions and providing progress updates. You you got to have some way to communicate so that the person to delegate to can come back to you and report. Say share in the management essential course. You got to have some way along the way to see how things are going. It isn't far to fire and forget. That is, I just give you the, uh, the task and I don't worry about it anymore. We've got to have some way to monitor the progress along that, that way without, without me getting in your way. Good. So what did you understand on this one? I think is the manager uh, create a communication or channel to have communication with the person to delegate a job or 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 work, and in this channel say the steps or or give for the way to guide the progress in, in uh, anything work, anything tarea, Task. Task, yes. Okay, very good. So definitely, right? When you delegate a project, a task, an activity to a person, you need to have a communication channel. So that person asks you questions and you can provide any feedback on the task or you can check also the, how is the project moving towards the goal? So it says establish a communication channel while you want to avoid micromanaging. You don't want to establish a communication channel so that the person you delegating to feels comfortable asking questions and providing progress updates. You got to have some way to communicate so that person you delegated to can come back to you and report such shooter in the management essentials course. You got to have some way along the way to see how things are going. It isn't fire and forget. That is, uh, I just give you the task and I don't worry about it anymore. Huh, no, that's not good. We got to have some way to monitor the process along the way without me getting injured. Or oh, interesting, the last part. So as a manager, you are going to monitor, you are going to check the progress, but you are not going to inter interfere with that one because that's why you delegate it, right? uh, because the other person is going to have the authority to do things there. Okay, do you have any questions on this one? No questions. Nice. Let's move on then to number six. Uh, this is allow to fail. Mm, this is something difficult sometimes, but we can try to. Uh, Ivan Petrovich. Okay, let me see. Allow for failure. This step is particularly important for the perfect perfectionists who about avoid delegated avoid. avoid who avoid avoid delegating because they think their way 
is the only way to get to work done. You need to allow for failures, not because your employees may fall, but because it will and uh, what is pronunciation? Enable. Enable. Thank you. Will enable experimentations and empower the people you are assi assigning, resigning, tax assigning. to tax to to take a new uh, approach. If you are open to new ideas and approaches to the work. You are have a easier time delegated when able. Good, what did you understand? Mm. I understand the 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 kite management is a it's a delegator, delegate the tax and the and the and the people. But uh the side delegate there is no uh, uh perfectionist. That's okay. It. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So yes, if you are going to delegate, you have to expect. Uh, if anything happens, that is not going to be exactly the result that you want. Of course, that's why you are going to monitor and check that everything goes well. Right? But yeah, people, they can fail and that way they are going to fail. So this says step is particularly important for the perfectionists who avoid delegating because they think their way is the only way to get the work done. Oh, that is not true and it's a big problem. You need to allow to, for failure, uh, not because your employees might fail, but because it will enable experimentation and empower the people you're assigning tasks to. To take a new approach. If you're open to new ideas and approaches to work, you'll have an easier time delegating uh, when able. I don't see any new word here, but do you have any question here? Okay, we're almost done with this part. Very good. Number nine. What's many? What's many? Uh, in the last one, uh, this word ap approach. Okay, approach is the way that you face a problem, the way that you face a situation. Mm -hmm. That is approach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, good. Be patient. Uh, Jamie, Raquel. Oh, okay. Be patient. As a manager, uh, you like him? have more years of experiences in your field. Because of this, a task you can complete in 30 minutes might take an employee a full hour, the first time they complete it. Uh, you might be tem tempered. tempted. You might be tempered to refrain for delegating. Certain ties, knowing that you can get them done faster, but be patient with your employees. Think back to the first time you completed a specific test early on in your career. You probably weren't as efficient as you are now. Your time management, management skills have improved. As you continue to delegate and your employees become more familiar with the test that needs to be completed, you notice that notice. you you notice notice that the work will be done faster over time. Very good. What did you understand here? Mm, the um, 
a characteristic that um a boss or a manager um must be must have is be passion because um when you have employers or uh, you have to you have to be passionate or you will be passionate because when you ask uh, to a, a employer to complete um, a specific task but if this specific task is the first the first time that is making probably uh, um you have to um, you have to um, don't hope that the employees could be completed in the um, less time because it's your first time that doing it. And you have to think that uh, all the person that I do um advice in the first time, the first time is so difficult for us. That's Very all. Perfect, that is it. Yeah, everything that you say, it was exactly that. So, yeah, you need to be patient, right? Because, I mean, the employees, sometimes they are getting experience, they are learning, they don't know many things, so they are going to be slower than that. So it says, as a manager, you likely have more years of experience in your field. What is likely? Probably. Very good. So probably. Very good. And uh, field. What is field? It's like a uh, area. Uh... Very good. That is it. Your field is uh, the the area where you specialize. Because of these tasks you can complete in 30 minutes, might take an employee a full hour the first time they do. You might be tempted to refrain. What is to refrain? A refrain is when you want to go back. When you say, uh, you know what, don't do this anymore, okay? I, I will do it better. So stop doing something. So that would be refrain. From delegating certain tasks, knowing that you can get them done faster. But be patient with your employees. Think back the first time you complete a specific task early on and uh, in your career. You're probably uh, wearing as efficient as you are now. Your time management skills have improved. As you continue to delegate and your employees become more familiar with the tasks that need to be completed, you notice that the work will get done faster over time. Yeah, I don't see any new work, but do you have any questions? Can you repeat what is tend to refrain? Yeah, refrain is stop doing something. Go back. Okay, refrain is, yeah, when you, you are going to do something and then you refrain. It's like, no, I don't want to do this. Something like that. Any other question? Okay, let's go to number eight. Deliver and ask for feedback. Uh, Holman Saul. In addition to monitoring progress, you should also del deliver feedback to your employees. After the task you delegate are complete, complete. If a if a task wasn't complete, 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 
completed. Completed. As a, a sign it, don't be afraid to offer constructive crit critis critis criticisms. Criticism. Criticisms. Your employees can take this feedback and make change the next time a similar task is as a signal assigned. Assigned. As assigned. On the on on the other hand, remember the provide positive to provide. feedback to, to provide positive feedback and show you appreciate appreciate when a task was done well. The answer you're delegating effectively. You you also want to ask your team for any feedback. Then they can give you as your employees if you provide, provide, provide write it, clear instructions and determine if there's anything you can do better dele delegate in the future. Okay, what did you understand here? I don't remember the meaning of feedback. Okay, feedback is when uh, you do a job and other people tell you how you did your job. So they give you good things and bad things about what you did. Um, uh, well, I understand it's important if the the good feedback I uh, in this in this paragraph, I understand it's important to have the ideas clean how. Uh, uh is 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 good uh always uh ask to 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 how how is the city situation to of all is of all is okay because when when you 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 ask and you ask always you 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 are uh looking the, the the you are looking the the co-workers and uh what do you what do you think about the the, the situation if all is okay or i or there are um questions if the 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 the, the assignment it's okay or there are questions about for do a good feedback okay so that is it yeah feedback is very important because in any process in any uh, project in any company uh, you need to to tell what is going on good or and what is needed to improve right so that's why this is a very important part of any process and it says in addition to monitoring progress uh, you should also deliver feedback to your employees after the tasks you've delegated are complete. So you say, you did a very good job in this and this and this, and you need to improve in this. If a task wasn't completed as assigned, don't be afraid to offer constructive criticism. Okay, so what is to be afraid? When you are uh, worried about it, about something very good to be worried about something very good so you can offer constructive criticism something positive that is very good so your employees can take this feedback and make changes the next time a similar task is assigned 
On the other hand, remember to provide positive feedback and show your appreciation when the task was done well. Um, to ensure uh, you're delegating effectively, you also want to ask your team for any feedback that they can give you. Ask your employees if you're providing clear instructions and determine if there's anything you can do to better delegate in the future. Do you have any questions in this one? Can you repeat the pronunciation of criticism? Yeah, criticism. Criticism. It's like it's a is more. Yeah, the the M is important to say criticism. Any other question? Okay, let's check into this one, the next one. That is the last one, actually. Uh, it's going to be for, let's see, Daniel Antonio Luna. Okay, uh, your credit where is two. After you delegate us and they be so to competition credit goes to achieve the work. Recognizing that success is because you of your team is not only right, but it has the other benefit of making those around you more engaged, making you even more successful. Right, HTS online executive director Patrick Mullen for Rich Topia. It's counter interesting, but not claiming success for yourself will lead to more future wins. The more you can and credit those you will delegate work to, the more likely is they will want to help you on the other project in future. Very good. So what did you understand on this one? Okay, when I when I delegate uh, uh, a job, I I need to give credit since the other person how how the the, the skills to to do the job. That, yeah. Okay, very good. So that is it. Uh, yeah. When uh, I mean, sometimes happens that. Uh, the bosses or the managers, they take credit for something that other people did, right? So that is not good. So you can say this project was done by this person. He did this and this and this. And that is a very important part of the, of the process. So it says, after you've delegated tasks and they've been seen through the, to completion. Completion is when you complete something, right? Credit those who achieve the work. Recognizing that success is is because of your team is not only right, but it has the added benefit of making those around you more engaged, making you even more successful. Rice HBS Online Executive at Director Patrick Mullen from Richtopia. It's counterintuitive, but not claiming success for yourself will lead to more future ones. The more you thank and create those you delegated work to, the more likely it is they will want to help you on other projects in the future. I don't see any other word here. Do you have any any word, any question here? Okay, very good. So let's stop here and let's check. We have a few more minutes, so let's do a little. No, we don't have time for that activity. Okay, so let's do a free practice then, this few minutes. Let's see, it's going to be individual now. Um, Vanessa. 
Hello. Hello, how are you? Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> very nice. nice. I'm very tired, but I'm fine because today is Friday and tomorrow is, I mean, today is Thursday and tomorrow is Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very good. So, uh, what do you do in your free time, Vanessa? Well, I'm, I'm doing many things. So first, I I go to the church. I'm on a, a group in the church. So on weekends, frequently I go to the church to do to give my service to the church and go to to on on. On Sundays, I went to the Misa. I don't know how to say that in English. Okay. So I, I assist to the church. Then I like to, and on on Sundays in the afternoon, I like to go to visit uh, a places in the south, like a taco. I like to go to to the beach uh, to in order to know new places so it's my favorite hobby i think to to visit new places in our country very nice very interesting uh, what is a good place that you recommend something that is very nice that everybody has to visit mm, okay i think in i don't know i have I have very, I have many favorite places I think. So I like to to visit in El Pital. I like places like mountains. I I love to go to to Perquí. It's a very nice place to 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 visit El Llano del Muerto. Have you heard about it? I have never heard about that one. Interesting. Oh, it's a good one. Yeah, it's a mountain that is called El Llano del Muerto. So it's it's the the, the weather it's very nice. It's in the at night it's cold, so it's very nice to to know. There are like um I don't know how do you say cabañas? Uh, cabanes, I think. Yeah, you can say that. Cabin. Okay. Cabin, yeah. Okay. And this place have has cabin, so you can camp in there. So there are many activities that you can you can make in this place. Interesting. I never heard about the place. Where is that? In Morazan, it's like near from um I don't know how do you say frontera? The border. The border with Honduras. I imagine that is far away. Eh? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. But it's a nice place to know. Okay. Honduras. Yeah. It sounds like a very nice place. I want to go to a place that is here. I don't know if you have gone to that place that is called Portezuelo. Ah, yeah. It's, it's a good, good place. If you like to extremely sport, I think <laughs> I I don't don't I didn't make some this activity because I'm I'm uh, um I don't know how to say me da miedo. I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid about this kind of activity because I don't I don't like, for example, the the highest places so. I can, I can, I can make canopy, no sé si se dice así. Yeah, canopy, yeah. Uh, so I don't like to, to, to make this kind of activity. So I prefer only to walk and watch all the person make these activities. <laughs> but I, I, I don't like to do it. <laughs> so you are the one who takes pictures. Yeah, <laughs> I prefer <laughs> to take picture and take me picture of me <laughs> or of take course. picture of the places. So, but I don't like to do this activities. Okay, very good. Interesting. 
Perfect. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Teacher. Uh, yes, Lorena. I have a question. Go ahead. How many vacation days are we going to have next week? Uh, that is a very good question. Uh, to be honest with you, we don't have, I don't have the answer right now. But in my experience, all the previous years, uh, what has happened is that we rest all the week. That's what uh, has happened all the other. For example, for Holy Week, for Eastern, uh, or yeah, San Salvador's festivities, uh, the problem is that since Insa Corp is, is not working all the week, that's why we don't work all the week. Uh, but I believe that you are going to receive a notification on that one on the WhatsApp group. Um, but most likely, I mean, I believe that that is what is going to happen. So if you have plans for the vacations, I, I guess that you will be able to, to make it. Ah, okay. Because the vacation of the government start the first August first. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, most likely. I mean, what they do is that yeah, I was checking that, for example, the date of the end of the course is going to be around the twenty first or the twenty second, I believe. So if you calculate that one, you will see that there are five days missing. Exactly five days. So. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Um, maybe, maybe we can work on Monday. I don't know. Maybe if we work, if we have classes, probably it's going to be only Monday, but not the other days. The other days are going to be uh, resting, I believe. But I believe also most likely it's going to be uh, all the way, the one that will be off. Uh, okay, thank you. Because uh, I... I... I, I work in San Miguel, in, in San Miguel only is the 6th, August 6th. Okay, let me check uh, Yeah, I'm checking the attendance, you know, this is like a little trick that I have here. I, I'm That's checking... Sunday. <laughs> yeah, so I'm checking here the attendance and I see here that the attendance is for today, tomorrow, that is the 28th, and Monday 31st. So, yes, probably we're going to have classes on Monday, but then on Tuesday and all the rest of the week, we are not going to have classes. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah, that's what I'm checking. So probably that is going to happen. Uh, Monday 31st, yes, we have, we'll have classes, but the rest probably we're not going to. Vacation. Before tomorrow, vacation, let's go to the beach. Okay. Well, I, actually, I have to work, so I won't be bad. Anyways, uh, we have a homework for tomorrow, okay? Uh, you are going to do something that is called bring and tell. The activity is like this. You are going to bring an object or a picture of a place, uh, and you are going to tell why this is important for you. Describe the object, describe the place, and tell why why you you believe that this is something nice or something important for you. Okay. This is going to be for tomorrow. Do you have any questions for the activity? So, teacher, uh, uh, I don't know if uh, we have a, a homework for tomorrow. Uh, can you repeat what the 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 homework? Yeah, the name of the homework is Bring and Tell. So you are going to bring to the class and show to the class something. It could be an object. It could be a place. So you can show a picture of a place and describe the object and the place and tell the class why this is something that you really like or that you uh, is or is important for you. Good. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Could Any other questions? Be a place, uh, a place, a thing, animal, an animal, a flower, a person, <laughs> or no? Could be a person. Yeah, yeah, it could be a person. A picture. Of a person. Depend the picture. Show. Ah, okay, <laughs> that is a good one. <laughs> Okay, my friends, uh, do you have any questions of the class of tonight? Uh, teacher. 
Yep. Um, before vacation and um, in the platform, what you need will be done? Uh, well, let me think. We're still on the unit number two. Check here very quickly. Yeah, it's going to be, let's see, tomorrow, Friday. Monday. Yeah, we have to be uh, on homeboards until 2.11. That will be the homeboard items. Okay, thanks. It's a pleasure. Okay, my friends, let's check the attendance and let's go to bed then. Let's see how it goes. Christian Alexander Arevalo Delgado. Daniel, Daniel Antonio Luna. Present. Good. Daniel Arquimedes Florentino Garcia. Present. Good. Erika Yasmin Martinez Carpio. Fátima Denisa Aguilar Márquez. Yes, teacher. Good. Herman Alexander Durán Linares. Present. Good. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Present teacher. Good. Ivan Petrovich Guzman Aquino. Present. Good. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Present. Good. Holman Saúl Giron Sánchez. Jose Alberto Baños Hernández. Present. Present teacher. Good, good. Cara Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present. Good. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz Morán. Present. Good. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. Manuel Antonio Escamilla Jurado. Nelson Antonio Errodas Rosales. Present. Good. Osvin Alexis Flores Hernández. Present. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Present. Good. Uh, Sulma Janet Ramirez Avalos. Present. Good. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemus. Present. Good. David Alexander Rodriguez Sanchez. Present teacher. Perfect. So my friends, uh, the one one of today is going to be for Cara Lorena. So the rest is going to be a pleasure to be with you and have a wonderful night. Have a nice night. Tomorrow is Friday. Nice and uh, I'm in English. Good night, everyone. Okay. Hi. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. Good night, everybody. Bye. Rest See you tomorrow. Well See you tomorrow. Hello, Carla. Hello. How are you tonight? I am fine. So, a little. I'm yeah, tired. we're tired. Yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, the first question I want to ask you is, uh, do you feel that you are moving on with the classes that you are learning? What is the question? Do you feel that you are learning with the classes? Mm, yes. Okay. And uh, do you have any questions about any topic, any uh, anything that we have checked? No, that happened is uh, I have been uh, sick and uh, I, I have a, a, a neuralgia that that get to him, you know? Oh my goodness, that's not say. Uh -huh. and, and, uh, this day I feel I feel uh, uh, a lot sick, uh, a lot uh, uh, headaches on my face and my teeth, on my teeth, on my heart, on my head, and I. I I was very bad. I was. And I, I was working uh, sick. Hey, my, that's good. I hope you get better. Thank you. And, and then 
for this reason I I I was uh, I, I maybe I I am not a one hundred percent in in class because sometimes all always oh only I am a listener but and sometimes I am listening, but I, I uh, honestly, I, I didn't put attention. Okay. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand but, that that is something. But for example, for example, today I was watching the video uh, for uh, because I I want to I wanted to do the homework. In, 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 I when 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 I can put attention the next day I I watch the video the class. Okay, yeah, that is a very good thing, and yes, it's important that you move on with the class. So little by little, I know that you maybe don't feel very well, but little by little, you need to move on with that one. So that is a very good. Thing. Okay, perfect. So I leave you to go to bed and rest. I hope you feel better and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. Good night.